Hey, Sean Jantz here. I'm going to do a quick battle plan for Wednesday, July 1st. I'm going to do it on slash ES, which is the S&P 500 and the other indices that you can find on Nadex. I'm going to start here on the S&P 500. And every single evening, I always like to start here on the four-hour chart, what I call the bird's eye view. And as far as the day trader goes, the four-hour chart is the most important chart to understand is what is our bias on this four-hour chart? Are we overbought? Are we oversold or are we at equilibrium? And a little bit of a recap in case you haven't been watching, right? So here is when the market lost a lot of volatility and the bulls just an incredibly pain, agonizing, slow grind to the upside. And then finally, they released some of that bull pressure. We went to the pretty much right into big round number 3000. And then starting from here, the market has just been in a rel relatively uh, tight range. You can see range high and you can see range low. And so last night in last night's trade plan, I said, hey, the momentum is definitely to the downside. And I said, more than likely this market, if it takes off, it'll want to go to 3,100. It literally went there today to the exact tick. That's why it's so beneficial getting these trade plans. I'm able to give you so much insight. And so now that we hit that 3,100, it sold off just a little bit. Uh, but for the most part, if we're looking just at this range here, we're pretty much in the middle. And so if it continues to go higher, we're going to have obviously the range high supply. And then we are going to have some decent targets to the downside and possible demand pockets if this market wants to retrace back down. And so when we move here to the 15 day, 15 minute plot chart, no more indicators. And what we're looking for here is just structure. We're looking for the best places to buy, the best places to sell. We're looking for support, resistance, supply and demand zones. So what I always do, I start exactly where price is and then I start planning and visualizing. What am I going to do or not do at every single level if the market goes higher? And then what am I going to do or not do at every single level if it goes lower? So let's first talk about if this continues to push. Now, our first, we do, our first layer of potential resistance or supply is going to be right here in the BTG plus 0.5. Now, when you look left on the structure, the only thing is it's kind of a crappy place. There really isn't too much structure on that plus 0.5. It's still decent. If you want to look for, if you're seeing decent change control, it's still a decent level, but most of the supply, it's slap you in the face, right? It's right here. And it's pretty simple. It's pretty much overlapping that BTG plus one. And so that would be my favorite place, obviously, to look for some change control resistance. And if the market is pushing through 3140, specifically pushing through all of this, I'm just going to let it go. I won't be trading up here if it breaks. Just whatever bulls have your day. Now to the downside. It's not as clean to the downside. We got a lot of lines a lot of context. So it's not just super clear cut, but you can see if this market does start retracing and getting through set value rate high and holding pullbacks, here's some of those targets I talked about. Wednesday's POC, negative 0.5, got another POC cluster, value rate low, and then of course you got negative one Monday. So there's a lot of targets. And if I were to buy this chart at a minimum, I would need to be pulling back into here or into that negative one and a half. So it's not super clean to the downside. Obviously, here's the big round number 3000. Uh, but so and so kind of sucks. But good news. Some of these other indices are a little bit cleaner. So when we move here to slash in Q, you can actually see already in Q's lines are actually a little cleaner. All time high supply at plus 0.5. I won't trade up there if it breaks, but you do got a plus one if you want to try it. To the downside, here's your big round number, value area low, two POCs, 10,000, the biggest round number you can possibly get in this market. There's your 10,000. And then, of course, negative one is, is, it, is decent, but most of that supply is actually into that negative one and a half or even that negative two. YM might actually have the cleanest lines. And to the upside, it's the same concept as ES. Plus 0.5, it's there, but it's there's really no perfect structure, plus one, and then roughly plus one and a half, it has most of the supply. To the downside, it's the cleanest. Look at this. Look at that clean that is. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Tuesday, value rate low, negative 0.5, all overlapping each other. Notice the difference about how clean that is compared uh, to compared to uh, ES, right? So obviously, if this gets through and hold pullbacks, that's pretty, that's pretty obvious where this market will want to go. And you can lock and trail so much freaking money to be made to try and run that market into those POCs. Really good demand pockets in the negative one. 
and the negative one and a half. Uh, RTY is very similar. If we actually kind of look, it's very similar to in Q. Actually, RTY actually kind of it's it it. it it's actually more similar to ES, I guess you would say. There is actually some decent lines on the plus 0.5 and the plus one. To the downside, not much going, not much lines on the negative 0.5, but you got big round number 1400 on negative one, and then all of these demand pockets and POCs into the negative one and a half into the negative two. So one thing that you have to be aware of, we didn't see it Monday or today, is that we are getting actually very negative coronavirus headlines. It just continues, the cases continue to spike, and yet it has yet to boil over into this market. And I'm a little shocked, but I do think it eventually will. So I'm telling you that is like, be prepared for some potentially na very massive negative days. And you don't want to get caught trying to catch a falling knife. When we see these negative headlines and the market's just tanking, don't get caught trying to catch a falling knife. It's one of the worst things you can possibly do. So my favorite quote, if the market's tanking on negative headlines and you're my, if, if like, if you are in doubt, stay the hell out. And don't forget, we also have deviations on the three major Forex pairs. You can see that right here. We also have deviations and value area on gold futures and crude oil futures as well. So make sure that you are taking pictures of all of your trades post uh, use the four-step trading process, post the bird's eye view, the worm's eye view, and the trade stamp so that you can get feedback and post it in the trader tribe so that you can get feedback from me and from others.